Hi, this is Diana and welcome to the lunch hour with the Bay Area chapter of the American Harp Society. I would like to thank them and to thank Ryan for extending this fun invitation to spend the lunch hour with you and play a little music for you and share a little bit what it's been like to be in shelter in place, which I've been doing since March 9th now. So it's been a while because right now, what date is it? Uh, May 19th. So uh, I was very inspired by the previous lunch hours with Destiny and with Ryan and the sheer sharing of, of what you enjoy playing and creating. And so I'd like to do the same. I would like to share some pieces with you that are, are written by other composers. And in particular, they're all going to be women. And they're all going to be women I know. And they're going to be some of my very favorite pieces, pieces that really touch my heart. Because when I was thinking about what shall I play today, I really wanted to play music that is very healing and very calming. Because right now, of course, there is a lot of uncertainty. I think there's also a lot of great hope for moving ahead in ways that we value, valuing the things that we care about, spending time with people that you love, even if it's going to be online, um, spending time in our creativity, which I believe is one of the great keys to fulfillment. So the program is going to be a little bit different today than my usual programs, which cover a very wide range of uh, influences and emotions. I'm actually going to be much more on the mellow side today. Uh, it is lunch hour after all and we're all inside and so I picked music that I find especially healing and just beautiful. <laughs> so you're going to, I'm going to t tell you about each of the composers as we encounter them. And so here we go. The first piece I'd like to share with you today is by Katie Reedy, who is the violist in my beloved quartet, Chimera. She's a wonderful performer and composer, as you're going to hear, and teacher, very innovative teacher as well. And we do a lot of programs together uh, with a program she created called Composing Together. And this is where we bring music, original music that she wrote, and now I'm starting to write it as well, uh, into libraries. And what we do is we accompany poetry. So we have a wonderful poet called Alan Byrne, and he both tells stories, children's stories. This program is for children right now, although we do an adult program as well. And so he tells the stories and he recites the poems. And normally he's written most of those poems himself. He was the children's librarian at Berkeley Public Library for most of his career. So he has a wonderful collection of children's books. And so we, uh, we love doing that. And right now, unfortunately, we're not doing it, but we are uh, putting together a video that will show some of what we're doing. So going back to Chimera, Chimera is my quartet where we write all our own music and it's a composing workshop, basically, for us four composers. We've got Katie, we've got Sarah Jo Zaharico. You'll also hear a song by her later. Uh, we have Moses Sedler on cello. And so Sarah's our violinist, and I love them so much. And you're gonna hear why. This is Migration by Katie. And for me, migration suggests something very bittersweet. So it's the idea of moving on, to new life, which is what we're doing right now. You know, we're moving to a new way of life that hopefully will be a better way of life. Uh, but there's also sadness in what we have left behind and what we are missing right now.
I'd like to share with you one of my compositions and this is called Tidal because it taps into water and all the different aspects of water. So water can be steam, it can be ice, great extremes, it can be solid, liquid, like an airy gas, I guess, with the steam. So to me that really reminds me of artistry and being an artist and all the different emotions that we feel first that's a stage one and then we express and this type of creativity really I feel it plays into everything that we do so as soon as you engage with anything it could be a conversation it could be uh, cooking it could be anything as soon as you engage in that thing you transform it you change it to some degree and that is creativity in action. So to me, creativity is definitely not just playing music, although I love doing that. Uh, creativity is whenever you directly engage with something. And this makes us feel fulfilled in life. Uh, so this is a lot what my book is about, The Bright Way. Um, this got released in March, <laughs> one week before everything hit. And uh, I'll read a little bit out of it later for you. Um, and give you maybe an exercise or something to work with from it. Uh, I believe everybody is creative and when we are creative, when we directly engage with something, with anything in life, we feel fulfilled. We feel that life has meaning. And to me this is the real reason art exists and creativity as a grand concept. Why it's so important to us as humans. Because Creativity really does reconnect us to ourselves and to each other and to life in general. And it makes us feel, yeah, that life has meaning. And I think once we feel it has meaning, even when things are difficult, we feel a sense of fulfillment. And I believe this is what we're looking for. This is what the good life is that the ancient Greeks talked about. You know, they, they weren't just talking about having a good time. When they talked about happiness, really their version of it was much more looking like fulfillment. And so here we are sharing our creativity with each other and feeling fulfilled. So let me play title.
The next song I'd like to share with you is by Sarah Jo Zaharako. She is a wonderful violinist and composer and member of my beloved quartet, Chimera. I love playing her songs. They have so much poignancy and there's a delicate quality about them and always a little bit of surprising quality as well. This piece is called Tony <laughs> and Tony is actually a horse. So this is part of that project that I mentioned that is from co composing together and it's where we go into libraries and play original music along with uh, books or poetry for children. And we also have an adult program, but it's mainly the children's program that we're doing right now. And Tony is actually this workhorse that goes through the uh, town delivering milk. And it's a really slow and dignified piece. And I feel it's got a very healing quality. So this is Tony by Sarah Jo Zaharago. The next piece I'd like to play for you is one that I wrote and it's called When I Open My Eyes. And I actually have sheet music available for this on harp if you want to learn it. It also works on piano and I play this with my quartet and various configurations. I play with my great friend Jennifer Paulino. She sings it because this piece is based on a poem. So there are actual words to it. It can be an instrumental as well, as you'll see. I'm not going to sing. Um, this poem is actually by Nuala Donal. She is a well-known Irish poet. She writes in Irish. I was reading an English translation. My dad speaks fluent Irish, but unfortunately, I left Ireland when I was five, so I never, I never learned it, sadly. Ah, oh, because it is a very magical language in many ways. Okay, what is the poem about? Well, it takes imagery from Newgrange, which is this prehistoric mound in Ireland, and there's a passageway that runs right down the middle of it. And on the winter solstice, as the sun rises, the first rays of sun go shooting down that passageway, and they make this chamber in the back glow golden for a number of minutes. And this astronomical feat, really, is still accurate after, I believe, 5,000 years now. And so in this poem, Nola takes imagery from this, from Newgrange, 
and compares it to the start of a new relationship, that excitement, that new relationship energy that builds up, you know, uh, that's what she takes. And so she's bringing together something very, very ancient and then also something very new. And I think that's uh, quite a sign of our times where we're taking and reclaiming many of the things that we've cared about most in society, um, art and connection, love, essentially, uh, and really prioritizing those. So, uh, meanwhile, we move forward into a new era. So, I feel like this poem uh, taps into that energy. next piece I'd like to share with you is by Diana Stork and she lives in Berkeley, California, which is the same city that I live in. So we have two Dianas playing the harp in Berkeley and uh, many harpists actually in the whole Bay Area. The urban legend is the most harpists in the world per capita. I don't know if this is true, but uh, it seems true to me actually. We have so many different types of harpists around here in this whole area 
and uh, so many different styles. Whatever you would like to learn, you can find a teacher specializing in that. I remember back when I was doing Virtual Harp Summit a lot, uh, I found Sue, who plays the Burmese harp, of all things. Uh, you know, it's wonderful. So it's a really great place to be for harping, as you guys know. So uh, this piece by Diana Stork is called Great Ocean, and it's in honor of the Dalai Lama. She has, Diana has been a practitioner of Tibetan Buddhism for decades, and actually, I, it's funny, nobody ever asks me about this red thread that I have. This one has lasted for a very, very long time. Um, I've gone through many of them. One of my dear piano students uh, went to follow the Karmapa, who is another Tibetan Buddhist leader, in India, and she has always brought these back for me, which are personally blessed by him, by the Karmapa, and uh, this one has been lasting an extraordinarily long time. And so it's really a privilege to, to have this on my wrist at all times, reminding me of the great principles uh, that Buddhism, amongst other great thought systems and philosophies, uh, embodies. So it's it's something I hold on to sometimes when I need to ground <sighs> and it makes me feel good and connected. So I think that's what we really want to feel right now is is connected. I think connection is the ultimate thing that we want in life. Feeling connected to ourselves, to each other, to our world around us. And music is an incredible way to re-establish that connection because it really taps into the dimensions beyond words, I feel. Words I love, you know, I, I fancy myself a little bit of a wordsmith, you know, I've definitely learned a lot having, you know, written, written my book. Um, but I have to admit that music touches something that words can't. Uh, and words can communicate things that are more sort of complicated concepts than music can. So, uh, yeah, I think everything, has its place and everything feeds each other. So whatever type of creativity you're involved with, I know many of us are harpists, uh, but we do other things too, right? And all those things are good and valid and they cross train. So the more that you follow those interests that you have and those passions and inspirations, the more they will feed your harping as well. Uh, so don't feel guilty about having multiple passions and multiple interests. It all, in the end, is for the same purpose, I believe. So here is Great Ocean by Diana Stork. I feel like she writes uniquely well for the harp. She really brings out the strength that the harp possesses, the beauty and the power, and everything that she writes falls in the hand really, really beautifully. So definitely check out her works. She has loads and loads of compositions and books, and I recommend them all the time to my students and for myself as well, as you can see. So here comes Great Ocean by Diana Stork.
The next piece I'd like to share with you is by Masayo Honjo, who I have the great pleasure of teaching and knowing. And this piece is called Yearning Ocean. It has a very meditative feel, and in fact, um, Masayo has the sheet music for this on her website, available in two different keys. So I'll be playing the one in C minor right now. And with this yearning ocean, for me, it really recalls how nature is giving us great solace right now. And many of us are rediscovering nature, finding comfort in nature. And when I think about the ocean and how in many ways we come from the ocean, we evolved from the ocean, and how the ocean is, is coming back to health in many ways right now. So I think about Yearning Ocean being a title that talks about that yearning that we have for nature and the comfort that gives us the strength that gives us the inspiration it gives us because honestly I believe that nature is probably the greatest template for creativity that there is when we take our cues from nature as Masayo has with this piece we get incredible amounts of artistic juice and motivation energy so I hope you enjoyed this piece by Masayo you can get the uh, music as I said on her website it's her name Masayo Honjo Dot com and I hope you love it as much as I do.
My next song for you on our lunch hour is a song that I wrote called Live Without Thought of Dying. It actually takes the words from the medieval mystic St. Catherine of Siena and is from a poem that she wrote. And the words are live without thought of dying, for dying is not a truth. And I really recommend you go online and find the rest of this poem. It sounds so modern, even though it was actually written in the Middle Ages. And it's a song that, it's a poem, that I feel, again, offers great comfort. And I had uh, the amazing experience of sharing this song um, with one of my friends and collaborators, with Jennifer Polino, and she taught it to one of her vocal students. And so they were singing the words, and the student's little son, who was, I think, five or six years old at the time, so this happened last year, uh, he heard her singing these words over and over again, and he said to his mom, you know, I was always so afraid of dying, but now I hear this song, I'm not afraid anymore. Uh, it really is an amazing poem. So uh, go and find it. Um, a woman poet, much like Nula Nidonal, a woman poet. Uh, we're very much having a, a female hour here. And it's not so much just about the female sex, but more about the idea of yin energy, receptive energy. Uh, we're in a moment where we're pausing in many ways and slowing down and really taking stock of what we have and how we're living our lives. And I feel this kind of energy is very much what we call the feminine energy. Now that's, again, not to do with your sex, it's to do with a yin and yang type of energy. And so we've been involved for decades, centuries really, with very young energy, millennia. Um, and there's great beauty to that energy, no doubt about it. I'm a fan of yang energy. However, we've been out of balance, I feel. And so bringing back the yin energy, that very creative, fertile, mysterious, non-linear type of energy. And I feel many of these pieces that we're sharing delve into that energy, that uh, mysterious and mystical energy. So here is Live Without Thought of Dying, and again inspired by the words of St. Catherine of Siena.
Thank you for coming to my lunchtime concert and I wanted to explain a little bit about the background here. I know most of you are familiar with the, the gold fan, there it is, and everything has changed actually in this house. So what happened, um, my book came out and then lockdown happened a week later and everything had been cancelled, like all my book tour, everything. and. I was sitting at home and I looked around and I realized, wow, you know, this place, I love it, but it doesn't really reflect me. I don't feel that connected to my house. And so I went on this epic spree of entirely redoing our house. And the first thing I wanted to pick were colors that really resonated with me. And so what I looked for were palettes. I was looking at various palettes. And I knew that I really love Art Nouveau, um, a little bit of Art Deco, and I love Greek style, uh, whether it be cooking, art, philosophy, whatever, music, everything. And so I wanted to fuse Art Nouveau and, and Greek, so I went, Art Nouveau goes to Santorini. And I was looking at all these palettes, and then I realized actually this palette right here was put together by Mukha himself, and it's like, well, let's use this. So I redid the entire house, and this blue right here is the blue on the walls and there are many other features around the house you can see the orange chair anyway I've been having a great time with it because you know no matter what is going on we can still be creative and I really have felt buoyed up by doing this whole remodel so I didn't get depressed and I knew you know I'd spent a year and a half on the book almost full time and um I'm trusting that everything is unfolding as it should. Because no matter what, we can be creative, as I said, and we have so many riches already around us. I mean, there was so much in the house that we're actually reusing, uh, we're repurposing a little bit. There are some things we're getting rid of, but we actually um, didn't need to buy a whole bunch of new things. Definitely a new dining room table and dining room chairs, let me tell you. And this little guy, which I love, my new chair. and. It made me realize, you know, how much we already have. I think it, you'll find that you already have inside you much inspiration and you have around you in your immediate surroundings many, many beautiful things and things that you can engage with. So I, I think it's a time of really feeling um, so much appreciation for what we have and for each other as well. So thank you again to the Bay Area chapter of the American Harp Society, Bacchus, uh, which I like very much, the god of wine, um, and Ryan for initiating this whole program. And so what I'd love to do is take you out with a little bit of a reading from my book. Uh, so this is from page 10 and the um, the title is Creativity is Connection. And actually, let me explain a little bit about the book. This circle here is what we go through in the book. This is the system that I developed for tapping into your creativity and following through with it in real life. Because as you know, it can actually be fairly easy to get inspired, but how do you consistently follow through with it? Um, it follows these five steps, so very simple, just five steps, and those are sequential. The very first is define your purpose. Then the inside elements, they're called the essential elements, are what happen every day. So the essential elements are inspiration, artistry, learning, technique, and community, which we're in right now. And these all happen at all times, no matter what. So they, they don't all happen at 20% each, but they happen all the time. They're your daily, uh, your daily bread when it comes to creativity. So 
Um, this book walks you through how to do this, and many hundreds of people have done this already through my Bright Knowledge Harp Circle, and now many people who aren't harpists are using this exact same system. Because as I say, all creativity is the same. Basically, our creativity is our way of interfacing with the world. And once you know your purpose, uh, which you already have inside you, uh, it just makes it so easy to do it and to stay inspired, uh, which I believe is the foundation of motivation. The foundation of motivation must be inspiration. It can't be force. You can force yourself for a while um, to be motivated, you know, deadlines and things like that. Um, but really, sustainable motivation is from your purpose. So let me read from page 10, Creativity is Connection, because I want to give you the charge that your creativity is already inside you and that your creativity is not necessarily about creating products. So right now, you know, we have sort of a product in that I did this concert, but really it's process that made it all possible. So just living a creative life makes this kind of thing possible. So when you create, you connect. As you engage with your chosen activity, you become one with it. We've learned from physics that when we interact with something, we change it. This interaction is connection made manifest, sparked by your direct engagement. When we make our mark on something through creative engagement, we see our true selves reflected back. This mirroring gives us a deep sense of belonging and meaning. Our existence is affirmed. We know that we matter. Our confidence is restored. Your entry point to this way of life it's what you already possess, your creativity. This is why creativity matters in and of itself. It is a reflection of you that literally makes you feel more you. It confirms your place in the world. It acknowledges your dignity and your right to exist and everyone else's simply because you're alive. Creativity reminds you that you are worthy in and of yourself. Therefore, it is the act of being creative that matters most, not the products of your creativity, because creativity has no agenda beyond life affirmation through connection. Our survival as human beings depends on being connected. The reality is most of us wouldn't last a few days alone in the forest. Surviving, let alone thriving, demands creativity. Humans are not endowed with protective fangs or formidable physical strength. We don't even run very fast relative to other creatures. Our superpower is our spectacular creativity. It is our adaptability, rather than our strength or intellect alone, that has allowed us to survive. Creativity, by its nature, is ever-changing. Adapting to the present situation, creativity then elaborates on it, bringing forth ever more vital expressions of life force. The circle of life turns, creativity affirming life and life sparking creativity. Our creativity has protected humanity through millennia of radical change. Creativity urged us to evolve. If we want to keep evolving, if we want to further our individual and collective life force, we must stay creative. All this points to creativity's grandest message Life is worth affirming and amplifying because it is the energy of connection, of love, made manifest. So I'd like to give you one little exercise from the book. And this is the activity, Brightway activity on page 20 called First Love. And what it does is it starts tapping into your very first memories of when you fell in love 
with something that you were doing. Because in those early memories are the seeds of your inspiration. So, do you remember the moment you first fell in love and connected with your art? Which could be anything from painting landscapes to baking cakes. So it's not just playing harp, right? <laughs> do you remember getting lost in an activity, that thrill of total engagement? How did you feel about yourself? Did you feel strong, excited, or another intense sensation? Write down your memories from these moments as emotionally and viscerally as possible. There are many benefits to writing down your feelings and thoughts from greater insight to increased follow through. Keeping a creative diary is one of the main to tools we'll use on our journey in the book and you'll learn more about this later in the book. Uh, for now, write in whatever is handy and we'll collate your work into your Brightway diary shortly. So you can get started on this activity right away, even if you don't have the book, writing down those early memories and how did you actually feel? What were the sensations? What are those memories? Because in those memories, there is the gold of your inspiration. So thank you for spending your lunch hour with me. And do tune in for the lunch hours coming up. We have an amazing lineup because we are so lucky in the Bay Area to have incredible harpists. And yes, keep on being creative. Let me know your comments and I'm excited to continue the conversation with you. Thanks again to Bacchus and to Ryan. And yeah, keep being creative, keep being connected.